like to know why you think coaching mini league basketball is not a community service. Those kids need help. They're poor kids. Tuck your shirt in. I did some dumb things in my life, Daryl, but my daddy never gave up on me. You were stupid enough to get yourself into this. Now I'm banking on you being smart enough to learn something from it. Tuck your shirt in. Oh, yeah, definitely my kind of place. Well, is this my man? If he say so. I'm your man. Any. Any. Just tell them. Tell them right now. It's not like it's getting any easier. Besides, you look like hell. And you never could keep a secret. I'm not ready. You're never gonna be ready. That's why you've just gotta do it. What, and hurt them? They'll hate me. They're not gonna hate you. Look, I'll tell them if you want me to. Don't you dare. Annie, I'm with you. That's all I'm saying. What's up? Secrets? My little girl is sick. Now, I can only go by what I know. And I know that this is no good. Annie, you, me, and your mother have got an appointment with Dr. Steffick tomorrow at noon. or shoes in the living room. Your father's giving them to the goodwill, and you, Matt, will be going barefoot. What is it? Please, what's wrong? I'm not going to see Dr. Sevick. I've already seen a doctor. You'll do as I say. No. Annie. Daddy, I've seen a doctor. You don't say no to your father, young lady. Not in this house. Now, those hospital doctors are all university boys with too much to do. Dr. Steffick has known you all your life. There's nothing wrong. We have eyes in our heads, Annie. Sit. No. Nothing is so bad that you can't tell us. Something is wrong, Mama. And I didn't... I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to worry you guys. Because there's nothing that you can do. Nobody can help me. What are you talking about? I'm not sick, Papa. I'm pregnant. Yeah, I know what you're doing. What? I said I know what you're doing. I'm here to help my race now, right? I'm here to make a contribution to my people and all that, right? Worst things could happen to you, son. When are you gonna see I'm not like that? And I'm never gonna be. So what? I got a lot to contribute. If my race doesn't like it, then it's their problem. But I'll tell you one thing. Eddie Murphy's done more for the... Shut up! What's your problem, Daryl? It is Daryl, right? That's right. You know, Gordon, it always amazes me the way you can just stir people into action. Look at this. You got this boy chomping on the bit. Hey, uh, he's a hard case. Hmm. I've seen worse. Listen, um, I think you can go now. Suits me fine. 7.30. We're waiting dinner. So, Daryl. I'm just a little bit unclear about this whole situation. Either you work here, or you get suspended. 
Have I got that right? Yes, ma'am. Then we better get something straight right off the bat. Your father is a valued friend of mine. And he's a brother. And when he comes to me and asks me to give his son a job as a special favor, I say yes. But that's the favor. I don't owe you another thing but that chance. You blow it, and you're out that door. Are you getting this message, Daryl? Good. Nice sweater. Calvin Klein. How long does cheerleading practice usually take? done in about five, ten minutes. <laughs> On sale? What? The sweater. I don't know. My old man doesn't care. Why should I? I love how he puts his name on everything. My old man's like that. Mm. I'm in fashion design, you know. Oh? A logo's gonna be my trademark, only I'm gonna put mine in script. this thing you have for juniors and senior girls. I mean, there's about 500 sophomores that are just dying to go out with you, even after Sandy Miller. What are you, my mother? What did I ever do to Sandy Miller? Besides stitch her to formal? Hey, there's two sides to that stuff. God, that Sandy's got some kind of mouth. I mean, I really hated how she's spreading around all these rumors that I'm a bad guy. I mean, I'm fair to my friends. I'm always fair. I mean that. Okay. I'm sorry. I just hate gossip, that's all. Well, what do you think about jumpsuits for men? Go for it. <laughs> Yo, Brandy. Hi, Peter. Hi. I have to go. Oh, wait. Look. The B-52s? Yeah. The real B-52s? Yeah. They've been sold out for over a month. Helps to know people. Plus, you gotta have money. Uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, well, do we have a date? We're not. Sure. I have to go catch Alice. Oh, sorry. Call me? Yeah. Jeff here has asked me to ask you to step outside. Who's the father? It doesn't matter. Oh, I think it does matter, yes. I think he has a son coming, too, and... Do we know him? I met him at camp this summer. We didn't even stay friends. We taught you right. You're a little girl. Here you are going around with every boy. That no. I... She's not like that. It was the first time. And it was the only time. I don't know. I know how disappointed you must be. And how you must hate me. But I'm trying to change. I made a grown-up mistake. And now I've got to be a grown-up and deal with it. I just... I just have to figure I out... I will never hate my own little girl. You should be ashamed to say that. We should call up the boy's family. Hmm? Meet his folks. Maybe if both families help, a marriage could work out. No, no. No marriage, damn it. But what we got here is sad enough without Annie marrying some skinny runt who... Annie will marry a good man who can provide for her. Someday, not now. You know, uh, sometimes you can really break my heart. Never say that I'm gonna hate you. All right? Now listen, 
You're not gonna deal with this. You're not grown up, not by a long shot. Anyone can see that. And you might as well not worry about it because it's not gonna help. Now, I want you to get some rest. You need it. You are my little girl. You got that? And I just have one rule. From now on, your father is gonna take care of this. I'm gonna take care of everything. Carl? Carl, what do you mean? Look, the way I see it, I don't know you, and you don't know me. I mean, we all owe Daryl, right? I mean, he took the rap for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we want our money. My 20 is 25. You want to pay 20? You said those A's were guaranteed. You have never paid top dollar without a guarantee. 45 bucks! Jeez, Jeff. It's your wizard's edition. I mean, why'd you even need the test at all? Hey, don't get Jeff mad. It's just a joke. You guys are really hung up, you know? Uh, give me a couple weeks. You got my word as a friend. <laughs> we got his word. Well, your word ain't much, Sego. Hey, you're really not my friend. And something might happen to that pretty little car of yours in the parking lot if you don't pay your debts. Now, Sego. You guys. You guys are thugs, you know that? Hey, wait, wait. I got the hottest tickets in town, man. The B-52s. Can you believe it? That's right, Jeff. Two. One, two. Fair what? Open it. This file is called a case study. You'll be learning how to help us keep one of these on every caller, every single kid we talk to. But right now, let's start off with the story hour. Read. Uh, out loud. Out loud? That's right. Look, look. I'm, I'm kind of old for story hour, so if you got something to tell me, can't we just discuss it like adults? Tommy, 14. Mother in. Mother in and out of methadone clinic. Father missing. Mother has friend, Frank, who comes by house. Tommy says Frank gets mother drugs. That's beating her. November 12th, Frank set Tommy up for a fix. The time was too scared and Frank hit him. Frank has hit his little brother several times for crying. Mother has thrown Frank out two times, but let him back. December 9th, mother back in methadone clinic. Tommy almost ran away, but won't, but won't leave his little brother. Tommy started using. Referred to Ann Solaris, methadone center, 1289. Ann Lewis call, youth follow-up. What color is that kid? I don't know, just says he's 14. Black? White. Keep reading. <sighs> Wait, is this stuff for real? <laughs> I wish it weren't. John, 12, loner. Reports few friends, some drug use. Mother runs small store, absent father, poor grades in school. October 12th, long rambling call. Won't talk about family. Mentions suicide. Won't discuss. Resist referral, October 14th, same as above. October 19th, same as above. November 1st, placed on red list, same as above. November 4th, incoherent sobbing. 911 referral ambulance sent. C717 report attached. He was okay. Diagnosed depression. He's in a shrink now, and we'll keep our fingers crossed. By the way, this kid's Asian. I know because he comes by here from time to time. This agency is colorblind, Mr. Johnson. I understand that you want it known that you are, too. Look, I never said that. I just mean with my dad. You know, dad. you never really know who you are until you actually see who else is out there. I think it's way past time you took a look, my man. This is one thing, and I was saying this to your dad earlier, this is one of those things that you just got to see for yourself, Daryl. Selena, can you get on the extension? Here, you do some homework. We've got a whole formal training program worked out for you before we even put you on the phones. But the best training is to watch and listen. 
Who is it? Uh, Cassie. She'll only talk to you. She's pretty incoherent. Carrie. Daryl, stay on. And take the 911 if I give you the nod. Carrie? Carrie, talk to me. Okay, all right. Where are you right now? Okay, it's okay. Can you tell me the rest? I'm here. I'm right here. Saying I'm lying is for charity. I mean, many league basketball helps a lot of kids. A lot of poor kids. I mean, they'll probably auction off each ticket for a hundred bucks. It's the B-52s, probably even two hundred bucks. I couldn't say no. Call me a softie. Call me something. Come on, Brandy. You're a pig, Peter. You amaze me. Try to do something to help people. Who gets you? What you need is a jumpsuit. Picture this. Ice blue velvet. Brandy loves blue. I'll tell you, said so. Hey, pizza, babe. Not much. Got mug. Fell out of love. <laughs> so what's it like with the basketball kids? Any fun? Oh, my dad had other plans. He wants me to be the new Malcolm X. Malcolm X? A wrestler? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm doing my work at this teen hotline center. Oh, man. What have I done to you? What Nothing. Done? You won't pay for it, buddy. <laughs> so what are they making you do? Oh, nothing. You know, somebody calls on the phone, you pick it up, you talk. But this one hand lady, she bugs me like a lot. Selena? Huh? The other day, she got this call from this kid. He said he had his dad's gun. And, well, as a matter of fact, he said he had the barrel right to his ear. You know, so Selena gets on the phone, and she's talking to him until the police and the paramedics came. But it was intense. It was like a movie, but real. What did the kid want? Like, to show off or something? No, he wanted attention, somebody to talk to. You know, a lot of kids out there don't have just one person they can talk to and just be their own selves. Pete? What? Oh, the kids are right. Oh, that's great. I mean, well, I don't care. What are you telling us for? <laughs> so did you nail Brandy with those tickets? Uh, no. My folks sabotaged me. They gave them to a charity. What dogs? Are you kidding me? Hello, this is Joel Smoke, the United Human <laughs> Foundation for the National Association of the Needy. <laughs> well, Mr. Small, no, we don't have any money right now, but you can take our first son. Eight Nintendo games and two tickets to the B-52s. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I mean, if they offered trade-ins on folks, they'd be gone in a second, you know? I mean, hey, that's why you keep your friends, right? I mean, keep it square. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. On the bag. Ah, gotcha. Oh, wow. <laughs> Daddy's still in the den with the door shut. I think he's on the phone. Not so long as he's been on the phone in his whole life. He must have thought of something different besides, uh, it's your Aunt Sophie. I don't feel like laughing, Maddie. Sorry. You want me to listen at the door? I tried. I wish he'd just yell and scream. He yells when the, when the garbage is not taken out. He yells when the refrigerator door is open about grades. Why can't he just yell when I'm pregnant? God, I want to die. Annie. It'll get better. It, it was good of you. It was, it was right for you to tell him. He just has to work this out his own way. How long have you known about this business? Not long. Before today, but not before you asked me. There'll be no more secrets in this family. Detroit. I talked to your Aunt Marge and Uncle Donald, and they said that you could stay there, Annie. What? Until the baby's born. Daddy! Now you're gonna get your own room, and Nan's gonna be up there at school. Now, we can afford a small living allowance, but we're gonna have to send you money for board, so it won't be quite as much. Now, they have got a Catholic hospital there, which is supposed to be real good. You're gonna get good care, and they'll help you with the adoption arrangements. Your mother will fly up with you on Sunday. Sunday? Daddy, what about school? What about my college boards? We'll see about that later. You can't just drop out of high school and expect to get into a decent college. I'm on the honors track. Daddy, I love you for trying to help me. But this is 
my life, and I have to make my own decisions. You did that already, and look where you are. I'm deciding now. You don't have a choice. that you're at school or work while the best soaps are on? Well, don't worry, because the soap has hit the air weekdays at 5.30 here on Channel 5.